Hello, this is One Mana Left, and today I have a video that I think a lot of the mana stackers are, have been waiting for, and this is going to be a video where I go over not just Mjolnir, but all of the mana stacking builds that are going to be good in 323 and what ways they may have changed. So let's just get right into it. The biggest change by far is that alt quality gems are gone. So we've got a lot of different like shakeups and different skill gems, all this stuff. For mana stackers, the single biggest change by far is that anomalous mana leech is no longer in the game. This has different levels of impact on different mana stacking builds. Let's go through probably the three best mana stacking builds. And then I'm going to talk about some either proof of concept builds that I plan to mess with this league. Or maybe ones I've thought out a little bit more or already played. Let's start with Mjolnir. Uh, that is most likely going to be my 323 league starter. I'm about 99% sure. And this was certainly impacted by the removal of Anomalous Mana Leech. Um, if you followed Mjolnir content at all... Basically, the way it works is mana regen in this game right now is not in a great spot. And to play a good mana stacking build, you kind of need to have a good amount of spend for Indigon. And to get a good amount of spend, you need a good amount of recovery. And to get a good amount of recovery, you need to have, you know, like 4,000 per second to get the max Indigon stacks. And you can't really naturally get 4,000 per second. I, on the pretty stacked character, only have like 1,200, only have like 1,000. The way you do get that, though, is through Energy Shield Leech. It's a little counterintuitive that you'd be playing a spell build that uses Energy Shield Leech. Or, Mana Leech, excuse me. Mana Leech to get your mana back. But Mana Leech is capped naturally at 20% per second. 20% per second is a lot. Uh, I mean, that's almost 4,000 per second extra, which gets me to those, like, Indigon numbers for this setup and pretty much for every build. The trick there is, though, that you actually need to do a pretty substantial amount of damage to get that much leech. And the way this is done is with Anomalous Mana Leech. So, Anomalous Mana Leech, if we've got our uh, remove only tabs here, Anomalous Mana Leech is a. Um, let me find this tab here. Anomalous Mana Leech is the regular Mana Leech gem. However, instead. It has, supported skills have 11, or for 23 quality, it's 10% increased damage for each 200 mana you've spent recently. Well, on mana builds, your mana spent recently gets to pretty stupid numbers. So what this does is, for Mjolnir, this makes Cyclone hit significantly harder, which gets you to a point where you can comfortably leech 20% per second. It's significantly harder to do this without Anomalous Mana Leech, just using regular Mana Leech. Um, so this is a nerf. But let's contextualize this with all the other changes that have also happened. So, to start off, let's look at my character from this league. This is Victor Wemban Mana, my character in Ancestor League. I started Mjolnir this league, and this is the one-week snapshot. Also, th these numbers are wrong because it doesn't factor in, like, Cluster Jewels. I probably had, like, 15k ES here maybe 14 but at this point i was killing like uber shaper um but if you look at my one week snapshot i'm not even using mana leech i'm i'm using just straight up my same five link i had on day one with less duration and phantasmal lightning warp um there is no mana leech in this setup now the next snapshot available is week two in this setup i do have uh anomalous mana leech but this is this is starting to get much more geared. Remember, cluster jewels don't work. Uh, I didn't have my three rat yet. This is right before I had my three rat, so I probably had like eighteen k here, seventeen or eighteen k. Um, but so somewhere in between week one and week two, I actually added an almost mana leech. But even at the one week mark, I still wasn't using it. And the reason for that is because there is a flask called Forboding Eternal Mana Flask. That just carries the whole mana situation. I made a video on this if you want to watch it. But the long story short is this is a flask that restores a really huge amount of mana. And with things like the alt quality clarity and stuff. And you can get 30 quality from like an Archmet Nemesis drop. 
you can get this over 4,000. You can get this to like 41 or 4,200 per, per click. Mana Flask also can multi-queue. So if I click this flask four times, it actually queues up all four instances. And it will have like 16k mana coming in hot. But it's on a delay, which is perfect because it comes seven seconds later. So the way this works is you cloak, you do your whole mana bond rotation where you're out of mana, which is good because that means you're doing maximum damage with mana bond. And then right in time to cloak again, all of those ticks of the mana flask that only uses eight charges come back all at once right at the end and put you back to full mana to start over. So you're basically in this rotation where you cloak and then like triple tap the flask. And then you just do absolute maximum damage and then immediately get all your mana back all at once right before you cloak again. It sounds a little awkward, but after you've played it for like two minutes, it, it's, it's just full autopilot. I made a full video on this if you want to check this, but this carries so hard. And this is largely why I wasn't even using a uh, mana leech at all at the one week mark. I played fairly hard the first week. I'm level 97 here. Like... I'm, I'm 97, and I'm, I'm already killing Ubers at this point, and I'm still just going on a no Mana Leech 5 link with Foreboding Flask. Um, for an end game setup, though, you would still use Mana Leech, but you would use regular Mana Leech, because the reason this gets you a little more damage at the end is because if you get your Caswin Channeling link set up to spend more aggressively... You can stay bottomed out and still use Foreboding Flask, but you're spending more because you're leeching more and still staying bottomed out, which gives you more Indigon stacks. So this does this does result in a damage gain. I don't know how much it is. It's maybe like 20 to 30% damage gain because of Indigon stacks, but that's a, that's a huge it depends. But I remember before I switched to Anomalous Mana Leech on this character, this league, I, I used the regular Mana Leech gem after I hit my 6th link, but before I decided to fork over 2 Divines for the gem. I was just using regular Mana Leech, and I could clearly feel I was leeching. I don't know if I was capping at 20. It depends on the content. If I'm in, like, a big AoE thing and delve, I am still leeching 20%. If I was fighting, like, an Uber boss, I was probably only leeching, like, 4 or 5% per second. But the Foreboding Flash solves all that. Um, and in enough gear, you probably still will have your leech covered. Um, just because once you get like crit jewels, if you go to that level of gear, you're getting all these sources of just generic more damage that kind of bridge the gap and get you to the point where your cyclone will hit hard enough anyways to leech cap you. So the only exception to that might be in like really high delirium, you'll feel the difference, but that was kind of already the case before. And once again, in you know, delirium, you'll have plenty of flash charges and an uber boss that has a 70% damage reduction, you probably won't be able to leech cap without Anomalous. But the thing is, as with most mana builds, um, you can kind of just kill stuff. There's not really long drawn out fights on builds that have over 100 million DPS in the end game. If, uh, if you're worried that you're not going to have enough damage for, uh, for uber shaper, you can just kill him in like two or three seconds. And then it's not an issue. So, the flip side of this is there were some changes to uh, some skill gems here. And basically all of these are super positive for Mana Bond. So Mana Bond itself got a way better quality. Before the quality did absolutely nothing. It, I, I honestly don't even remember if it was 10% damage or 10% AoE. It was terrible. It, it was garbage. Now the quality gives you... Um, 10% of missing mana spent, which for context, the gem itself gets all of its damage from 45%. So basically you're going from, from 40, from 50 to 55 from 45. So that's like a 22% more damage gain. That's a big deal. You can also in some, in some ways, maybe enhance this, but probably not on this case. Um, the other changes is arcane cloak got a lot better. So we've, we've talked about, you know, the downsides. We're getting into the upsides now. Because with all the upsides, I would say the build comes out stronger this league than last league. You just have the one hurdle to clear with solving your mana. Which you have the flask and ultimately an end game enough leech to get around it anyways. But um, Arcane Cloak now gets 20% buff effect at 20 quality. You do lose the helm enchant. But the thing is, this is kind of a free link. This isn't like a six link. You can just slap this in with a level 4 enhance. Level 4 enhances usually cost like 2 or 3 divines. 
they might be more this league but like your end your more end game setup you're gonna maybe pay a, a few divines for a level four enhance and you're gonna juice this up to 44 percent buff effect that is a pretty big deal um the other thing that changed that got better is shock nova i'm probably still gonna play the lightning warp setup just because it's so fast it's like it's faster than a lot of Mage Blood builds before you get Mage Blood on like day one or two in the league. Like, it's it's kind of stupid fast if you've ever. I don't I don't have a clip available of me warping around at the speed of sound, but it is a very fast build if you get the the mechanics down to the Lightning Warp setup. Um, but the um, Shock Nova is what I was looking for. Got a buffed quality, and this is really abusable too. Shock Nova now, so Shock Nova inherently gives plus 10 max shock. Everything in the game caps at 50 shock, but Shock Nova caps at 60. But now the quality gives maximum shock. So you could juice this with an enhance. And there's a reason you might use enhance as well with Cyclone's new quality. You could use enhance in your chest and you could get this up to like, instead of plus 10, you could get to like plus 26. If you had, like, a level 5 enhance with either, like, a plus 1 chest or, like, you know, a bit, just a big enhance. Like, th this is end game setup, but, like, that would give you 86% shocks, which both helps your cyclone damage for leech. And, obviously, it's 86% increased damage taken on the monster. The other reason you might use enhance as your 6th link in the shock nova setup is because cyclone itself also got a much better quality. So, before, the best quality you used for cyclone was divergent cyclone. Um, which made you move not 5% faster in the traditional sense, because Cyclone moves at 70% move speed, but the Divergent made you move at 75, because it's it's 5% more move speed, but because of how the math works, it's actually not, because it's 75 versus 70. So you're technically moving 7% more speed, but now the Cyclone um, quality, where is it, is... Um, 10% more speed per quality, which is double that. So you might think, oh, it's 80 still instead of 70. I'm 14% faster. But if you threw in, like, even a level 4 enhance in your chest setup and, and bumped that up to 22, now you're moving at 92 move speed instead of 70. You, you're, you're cycloning 31% more speed. And potentially, either with, like, a plus 1 chest or, like, a level 5 enhance, you could get this to the point where your cyclone speed is 100%. So you actually cycle as fast as you run, just like Stampede, except this could be with, like, Quicksilver and everything up where you're going, like, several hundred move speed. There's also things we've seen with um, the uh, charms in um, the coming lead mechanic where you can get, like, the Juggernaut, like, can't go below minimum speed, stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about charms because that's kind of borrowed power, and I want to address this, like, in absence of borrowed power because obviously that's just everything I say here not talking about charms and stuff and tinctures and all that. Obviously, with that all sprinkled on, this is going to get stronger. But all things considered, assuming you can get the leech solved, which with gear or foreboding flask or both, you can. The, this setup's probably going to do like 25% more damage this league with all the changes. And it's going to move like 25% faster in the Shock Nova setup. Same, same probably in Lightning Warp, roughly. But the Shock Nova setup, on top of moving faster, would also, with the extra shock effect and everything else added together, is going to be between 40 and 45% more damage than what I've normally played this build at. So this is going to, this is an already really high damage build, and it's going to get more high damage. So Mjolnir is alive and well. There is one notable nerf with Anomalous Mana Leech, and that is... Not insignificant, but you can certainly overcome it. And let's be honest, foreboding mana flasks, this isn't some, like, caviar sipping, like, oh, just put on mage blood. Foreboding mana flasks is a blue item that is worth two chaos. It is a two chaos item. Maybe one chaos. Maybe you just alt it yourself. So, we've, we've got the fixes covered uh, on a budget. All right. The next one I'm going to talk about, Mana Forged Arrows. 
in reflection, this is the strongest build ever in Path of Exile. I've thought about this a lot in the last few days. And the only competition was Heist Aura Stacker. And I've thought about it a lot. It has 20 times the damage of Heist Aura Stacker. It has a lot more tankiness than Heist Aura Stacker. And the only thing Heist Aura Stacker had on it was 450 to 500 move speed to my 330. So I think overall it is probably the strongest build ever. Um, it gets a big impact from the lack of Anomalous Mana Leech. Because I talk about this in the Mana Forge Arrow video. Mana Forge Arrows is very, very nice with Anomalous Mana Leech because um, you are an attack-based build. So the other thing is Mana Forge Arrows gets a lot more spend than Mjolnir. Mjolnir is going to be rocking like 16k spent recently for Max Indigon stacks. Mana Forge Arrows gets over 100,000 spend. So this quality gives you like many thousand percent damage. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> So, this is definitely the biggest nerf of all the mana stacking builds. But oddly enough, I, I, first, I first thought it was dead when I saw this. And then I kept reading the patch notes and kept seeing all the things it got. And it actually is pretty much back to the same power level with the one caveat that you have to keep Battle Mage's Cry up. So, let's, let's do some quick math on this. So, right now... Let's let's look at this POB. Um, not this POB. Let's look at uh, Victor. All right. Now you might think this is made up numbers, but this is like my max ramp. This is seventeen point five billion DPS. If you think this is a fake number, I encourage you to watch my Dell video I just did. Um, at max ramp, I can do this much damage. So. This is just, I, I know I've already said this, but this is such a stupidly strong build, it's hard to even frame in full context. If you didn't watch, I just put out a Dell video where in one take, on one try, I did a two hour and 16 minute video where I was doing the hardest nodes with like 10 mods at five and a half thousand depth for over two hours. And instead of just killing things instantly and winning, I was deliberately not killing stuff to show the mechanics. And in that entire 2 hour and 16 minute video, the only time I died was when I deliberately died to show how hard Argus hits by standing still and it took him 3 attacks. Aside from that purposeful demonstration of giving Argus 3 free hits... I did a 2 hour and 16 minute video at 5.5k depth on the intentional hardest nodes without dying. And basically, when I chose to, killing stuff instantly. So, this build could use a pretty large nerf and still be the strongest build in the game. But, let's, let's show some examples. So, the reason that, if you don't really understand how the build works, it's very dependent on your spend and it's largely because of uh, Anomalous Mana Leech. Um, if you go to a, like, let's say 80k spend, now this is 1.2 billion. This is like a little more reasonable number. This is four globes of mana spent recently, roughly, because I had 22k mana. So this is like, let's call it, you know, 88k. Um, this is about what it looks like when I blow up an uber boss after like one cloak and spending like maybe, well, on, when I blow up an uber boss, it's probably like two globes of mana. So it's probably only like 44k. That, 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 that looks like about right for like killing a maven or something. But normally for delving, I'm probably most of the time at like four globes spent recently. So about this much damage. Now, with the changes to Anomalous Mana Leech, the like kind of half joking numbers at like this range. Um, I, I have reached this high in ramp in delve, but it's kind of unrealistic. These numbers you will not be able to touch again. But these numbers were kind of a fairy tale because nothing in the game has enough health to justify these numbers. Th Monsters and Delve would have to go around the HP cap and have 100 billion health for this much damage to matter. So let's let's use a normal estimate of 100k spend. This is on the high side. This is more damage than any build in the game needs. This is enough to cruise to 6k Delve. Can we get to these numbers again this league without Anomalous Mana Leech? And the answer is yes. 
because a lot of the changes are actually super beneficial besides this removal of anomalous mana leech. So how much is 100k spend? Well, within a 22 or higher quality gem, 22 or 23, um, that's 100,000 divided by 200 times 11, which is 5,500% uh, increased damage. And then additionally, I'm probably also using Battle Mage's Cry on my weapon swap. So I use a weapon swap with a Red Blade Banner. And then I have uh, Battle Mage's Cry with an Indigon 2,000%, which gives me 3,000%. So that setup before additionally had the 3,000% from Battle Mage's Cry. So this had 8,500% increased damage at 100k spend. And 100k spend, like I said, is enough to delete anything, even a max HP Delve boss. Um, the thing is, you can effectively get back here. And let, let's just say generic damage was 500%, because like you start with 100%, obviously. You have the Hierophant Mana Talent, Transfiguration of Mind, that gives you like 200%. You have Gem Qualities that give you like 50%. You have just some generic, like, lightning damage on Cluster Jewels and stuff that's going to give you some percentage. So your your total percentage is probably around 9,000%. Um, so with no Anomalous Mana Leech, we are losing 5,500% of that and going back down to 3,500%. But there were some other changes that are really, really positive. So, like, the first one we already talked about was Arcane Cloak got buffed. Pretty much all the flat in this in Mana Forge Arrows comes from um, a little bit from the Quiver, maybe like 500 flat from the Quiver and Widow Hail, and then maybe a little bit on Rings. But then uh, you get the other like 3k flat from your Arcane Cloak. So pretty much all your flat is still from Arcane Cloak, like 80% of it. So Arcane Cloak's quality being that good, and then mixing that with like a really high level Enhance can make your arcane cloak like let's say it goes let's say before with the same setup it was 26 percent and now it's 52 so effectively it's 20 percent more flat and then let's even just say that's times 80 percent so that's 16 percent more damage from the arcane cloak change so take that times the 3500 remember we gotta, we gotta get back to 9000 okay um the other thing is storm rain which is the main damage skill, now just gets plus one beam. So normally Storm Rain does... Uh, oh, it's in my chest still, right? Normally Storm Rain does four beams. Well, guess what? Now it does five. That's just 25% more damage. Okay. Sweet, we're up to 5,000. But then, remember, you're using an Anomalous Mana Leech. You don't need to if the gem isn't giving you damage. You can get your mana leech from either a cluster jewel with daring ideas, or you could anoint essence sap, which would both give you 10% mana per second extra, because it's uh, 100 or 50% maximum total recovery per second, which puts it from 20% to 30%. That's a pretty significant gain. But this can cover all your on hit leech. You don't need to support the gem anymore. So. That means you gain a support gem. Okay, well, plus one support gem on Mana Forged Arrows is like 45% more damage. So we're up to times 1.45. But wait, there's more. Since you're gaining a support gem and Anomalous Mana Leech does not have a mana multiplier, now you could have a higher spend cost, both on your spender, on like Lightning Arrow or Blast Rain, and you could have a higher mana cost on the storm rain which makes the mana forge arrow multiplier higher which will make you ramp faster because there's still two degrees of ramp with the cost on mana forge um so ramping still is a thing but it's actually with the battle mage cry set up a little less ramp dependent because you're, you're only ramping like two, two dimensions instead of one or two dimensions instead of three but um so you're i don't know how to quantify this change but let's be super conservative and call that 10 percent more damage from being able to use a more aggressive loop that has a better shot ratio. Right now on Lightning Arrow, I use a 3 to 1 shot ratio. And on Blast Rain, I use a 4 to 1. I think with this change, I could be at 2 to 1 and, and 3 to 1. Which would be 50% more procs and 33% more procs. But let's just be super conservative and estimate that that's only a 10% damage gain. Okay. Well, just based off everything shown so far, we're almost back to the same spent, the, the same damage as what 100k spend 
would have, which is enough damage to delete anything in the game. Um, so TLDR, you can get back to the same power level at around like the medium high spend amount. You can't get to the same damage level that like the max spend used to be. But once again, there was nothing in the game that had enough health to ever get to that much ramp. It was just like was basically impossible. The only clips I would ever get that I could get close to that high was Beyond Nodes, where I delete the boss instantly after fighting all the rares with like no downtime. And in low ramp situations, like just Uber bossing, where you're just gonna blow up the boss right when it spawns, because you're not dependent on the anomalous mantle each percent multiplier anymore, you actually ramp faster. You have a better shot ratio for faster ramp. And you're more you're you're more uh, static on your percent increased rather than ramping, so you actually ramp harder and and do more damage up until about 100k spend. So on like your kill the maven instantly scenario at like 50k spend, this setup actually this league will do more damage. The big downside I will I will still say though is you have to have battle mages cry up. That's the big difference. So whatever you're playing, you have to be able to swap. Battle Mages Cry and swap back. It's 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 going to be a little annoying. I think it's something that if you play it, it'll be fine. Because it, a lot of these things are muscle memory things. You know, remember, people played slam builds for an entire league where they had to use like five war cries in a row or some crazy shit just to use like five slam attacks. Like, and people got used to that in like hours. So I'll 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 make sure that I'm very clear with this that. That adds clunkiness that you have to have Battle Mages Cry up and see I have an 11 second Battle Mages Cry. So basically every two cloaks I have to Battle Mages Cry to do those same numbers. But the only time you need that much damage is one, when you're bossing, you don't really need it in high gear, but but like when you're killing bosses, you have nothing to do until you can attack them anyways. So when I'm killing Maven, when I'm killing Exarch, anything I'm killing for a boss, I always pre-Battle Mages Cry. Just because there's nothing else to do. You're just standing there. And then you just kill them instantly. So it doesn't really change bossing. Delve, by the end of it, I got trained well enough that I was keeping Battle Mages Cry up most of the time. Just because... Two reasons. One, I kind of, in that scenario, appreciated the extra damage. And two, um, you get to a point in Delve where you're so high ramped that you have to you have to pump the brakes and let off the gas a little bit. Because you want to you want to plateau on a sustainable amount of ramp. You don't want to just ramp to infinity and then not be able to shoot anymore. So you have to deliberately let off the gas a little bit on long fights. And I just use the swap battle mages cry to let off the gas because that's like 0.4 seconds where I'm not firing, and I have to not fire anyways to get my ramp down a little bit. So it's just free damage for a pause I would have had to do anyways. The thing that's going to feel clunky is mapping, um, because. You know, having to use a war cry every 11 seconds sounds annoying. But here's the thing. Tier 16 maps, the monsters have no HP. So you might still not need it. Like, you you might be able to just still kill stuff in one hit in maps. Just because map map content doesn't have an HP. You might still be fine. If, if you're not... I haven't played it yet. We'll see. If you're not fine for mapping, being able to one-shot the whole screen, one change you could do is to, instead of using Storm Rain in your mana forge arrow you could maybe change your mana forge damage to something that has good clear like lightning arrow because the way i play it right now is when i'm mapping my my lightning arrow is killing everything and lightning arrow does not have the mana forge arrow ma mana multiplier the mana forge arrow mana multiplier uh, damage multiplier from mana spend is like a hundred times damage that's way more than the anomalous mana leeches so the, the fact that Lightning Arrow is killing stuff instantly without that multiplier means that if I shifted that into my chest link instead, it would really, really kill stuff instantly, even without Battle Mage's Cry up. So I'll have to play with it. That might be the play, is to just use like a Lightning Arrow setup in your chest, or in your in your main Mana Forge, and then just double up on um, Spender Lightning Arrow and Mana Forge Lightning Arrow. And if your spender doesn't one shot, the mana forge definitely will one shot, even without battle mage cry up. I'll have to experiment with it, but I kind of suspect that might be the solution if you can't one shot map content to farm comfortably. I'm not sure if I will end this coming league with mana forge arrow. I suspect it will probably still be the strongest build in the game and might be my go to Dell build for 6k. 
but um, it's got to have one extra thing to get used to that by the end of last league delving, I was kind of already used to doing anyways. Um, but I say maybe my delve build. Let's, let's talk about the third build because there's some new tech on this one and I'm really, really happy to share this. I'm actually getting kind of excited just, just thinking about it because after some testing I did last night, Let's move on to Archmage, and you'll notice this is the setup I actually ended the league in, if you, like, see the last snapshot on Peewee Ninja, or see my current character logged into Standard. I ended the league on Archmage, and I made a video on this this league on the billion DPS Archmage build using reverse snapshotting, and I showed off a build with Blade Vortex that was really, really high damage for just instant deleting bosses. But I, I made sure to include that it was a little bit clunky to play mapping because you have these like downtime windows and it's just it's just a little awkward to play. Um, and that's always been a bit of a put off for me because uh, it, it doesn't make the best delving build either if it's clunky and if it's like not super defensive. But I've, I've been thinking of how to get around this and I, I've been theory crafting on this and I think we've improved the Archmage setup considerably. And I'll show I'll show off a little bit from last night. So. The new Archmage setup is cast while channeling. That might sound silly, but let's let's unpack this fully, because what I did last night was insane. I'll show you. So, you'll notice I have Cyclone in this staff now. Why is this important? Well, if you watch the, the Battery Vortex video, the reason it's clunky is because you have to kind of just run around you can't spend during the Indigon stacks, because basically you can spend fine, you can do whatever, and then when you use Arcane Cloak, your main spender costs like 40,000 mana, and if you start using skills during those four seconds, you'll gain more Indigon stacks, which will put you over the cap, and then you'll lose all your damage. So the reason the build is awkward is you have to basically stop doing everything during those four seconds until your Indigon stacks fall. Which is the reason I always say this is an amazing bossing build, because for bossing, that doesn't matter. You press the button, the boss dies. That's, you don't, you don't, you don't need any further smoothness to the build if the boss dies instantly. But like I said, for mapping, this was a little weird. And I've been thinking on this, and I'm going to show off a setup that... This might be my end of league build. This, this has got so much potential. So... The new setup is Castwind Channeling in the staff with Cyclone. The reason this is amazing is because even when I cloak and get my uh, skill cost up to 40,000, the Cyclone is still in the staff. So it's still spending energy shield and not giving you Indigon stacks. So it allows you to keep uh, Cycloning, which is very good defensively. It's very comfortable for clear. There's a lot of upsides to this. Uh, the other reason the build is clunky is because you have to do two things with the timing. The first is you have to precast all your abilities and then cloak, which kind of sucks. It's just this cycle of timing where you precast and then you cloak, and you precast and you cloak, and you can't go too early or you double spend and die. And if you go too late, you know, monsters are building up around you and you're taking damage. You know, you want to go. F it. There's a timing element and awkwardness to it that's not super fun to play for some people. The way I've come up with here completely automates it. So here's the genius. Ready? Cast when channeling will will cast whatever is your your main your main nuke the whole time. So for this example, we're having a penance brand we re rework in uh, 323. I'll go over this a little bit uh, later here, but this could be penance brand. Armageddon Brand, Storm Brand, Cremation, BV, any duration skill in your cast when channeling. When you're cycloning, you look at my brands here, you will cast this every 0.3 seconds. And it will cost pretty much nothing because the cost of it right now is just 400 mana. So it's just costing 400 energy shield to spend this. And I'm just, I'm just full time casting this. It's fully automated, right? But when I cloak and the cost goes to 40,000... I can't cast it because I don't have enough mana because my mana dips down and then I don't have enough to spend, but I can still keep cycloning for instead of two mana, 
with full Indigon stacks, it costs 70, 70 mana. So I can I can keep cycloning and just spending Saturday energy shield, which is nothing. That's three or four three hundred per second, like one percent of my energy shield per second. That's nothing. Um, but then the second the four second Indigon stocks stop stop ah stacks drop, it immediately goes back to casting. There's no timing. It's fully automated, and all you have to do is have your regen correct so that um, you get back to full mana. For when you cloak again so during those four seconds you never have enough mana to spend on the main nuke and then during the downtime from when cloak is coming back up to when you cloak again you get back to that mana amount that you could have cast it but by then your stacks have dropped and then you cloak again and it goes back to the cast from channeling can no longer spend it all your duration skills start nuking and then the four seconds is up rinse and repeat now it just starts auto refreshing them so if you look if you look at this again you'll see i'm casting brands they're on the ground behind me i'm cloaking now i'm not casting brands but they're still up you see because they're a duration skill and i can still cyclone and now that my stacks have dropped they're casting again so this fully automates it um i'm gonna show you some testing i did last night to just show you the potential power level of this so I want to preface this with showing that I threw this setup together after I had this idea in like 10 minutes. I am missing so much damage here. I am from what is an equivalent spent budget that's actually optimized crafts. I'm missing somewhere between 8 and 10 times damage. Because I don't have rune binder in this setup. I just said whatever, nah. No rune binder. That's double single target. Penance brand is getting buffed. And so is potentially a cremation setup. There's a couple other setups. I could optimize Armageddon brand with cast speed. There's a bunch of setups I could do that would do like double this damage after 323 drops from what I'm doing on this testing right now. But I thought I'd just test Penance brand because Penance brand is getting reworked to potentially be better. We'll see. Um, I don't have a whole link. Shaper staffs can roll level 20 cast wall channeling which would let me drop this and replace it with an extra damage link. So that would up this to a seven link, okay? So that would be like 45% more damage. It gets better. In this clip I'm showing you, my timing is way off, but because I'm missing the link, I have to jack up my cloak cost with the enchant to make it like 82%, which means it takes so much longer to get back to full mana that I'm only able to cloak every 11 seconds. If I had the additional link, and then I could get away with only having to use like a 60% cloak because I have a lower spend multiplier. Then I would be getting back to full mana in like 7 seconds. Or maybe I need 1 mana regen roll. Or just some tweaked arc arcane surge setup. So I could get this to be going every 6 seconds. When in this setup it was going every 11 seconds. So that's nearly double damage too. All these things, add, I'm using a 22% indigon as well. If I had a 25 that would be 10% more damage. If I had everything fully optimized, I would be somewhere between 8 and 12 times as much damage as what you're seeing in this clip. So, I did this at 4K. I, I know it's going to be a little blurry. I'll go full screen here. But, um, this is from last night. And this is uh, 4,079 depth or whatever. And it's a pretty modded zone. Let's see how the damage looks. Remember, I am missing between 8 and 12 times damage here. This this I'm leaning right now might be my delve build. And a potentially an all-arounder build for 323. I, I There's still so much to theorycraft and improve, but just it's it's stupid numbers. So, I'm not pressing the button yet. We have the nuke button here, but I wait till I get to the node. Just I could cloak and kill stuff, but just watch this. Watch what happens when I press the button. Ready? Pop. Pop. <laughs> this is depth 4,000 with nine mods. Ready? Pop. Three, two. I, it just, every time I press cloak, it blows up the entire screen. This is 350 times, no, four, 450 times HP at 4100 depth with nine mods i know this might be a little blurry on uh the clip i got but 
I mean, this is a modded 4K zone, and I'm missing 10 times damage from what an optimal setup would be. And every time I press the cloak, the entire screen blows up in one hit. It's it's stupid. It's stupid. Like I I didn't I didn't stop at four thousand either. I, I I cranked up to a granted. This is a real cupcake node. It's just onslaught, so this is like the the easiest node ever. But it's depth six thousand and four. This this is depth six k. This is the end of the game. This is the bottom. Like. I one-shot this node. This was the first 6k node I did, and I one-shot it. So, Archmage builds below 6k in Trial of the Ancestors League had a 100% success rate in 6k plus delve. Because this is the only one I did. Still it still blows up the whole screen. So, and remember, this might look like awkward timing, but like I said, my mana regen and spend is all screwed up right now, so I'm only able to do the pop every 11 seconds. Which, that, it's not that it's one pop, it's, it's, I have a four second damage window every 11 seconds, so I have four seconds of damage, and then seven seconds of downtime, which looks really bad, but with the actual optimized setup, it will be four seconds of damage, and two seconds of downtime, which in mapping, that downtime, I'll show you in a second, still kills everything, so even during your downtime, you still kill everything, the, the downtime only matters for delve, but it will look very fluid, very smooth once I get the the rotation cut in half, and it's mostly uptime. This was a this was a theory crafting session, but I I think I'm gonna tweak this build to be just a complete monster, and this this might be my like my six K delve build. We'll see. There's so much potential. I want to add that I did like two weeks of testing with Mana Forged Arrows. To get it to the point where I was comfortably doing like 1200 nodes. And then a league later, it was like the craziest build in the game. This was after like 15 minutes of theory crafting. Like, it took weeks to get Mana Forge Arrows theory crafted this good. It took 10 minutes to get this build this good. And there's so much meat on the table. There's so much left to, to improve. Uh, so, the Archmage setup is, I think could be the champ for 323 and the nice thing too is if you want to just crank out a bunch of bosses the easy thing is all you have to do is go change your gems and your cloak level and you could just go do a bunch of bosses with bv and just still kill them instantly so you could just you could just have the instant nuke the boss you know 0.1 second kill and then just switch your gems back to like delver mapping i'll, I'll do one map right now just to show but like I said, this is like super mega clunky with, uh, here. this is like mega clunky. We'll get, here we go. Okay. Suppression, I guess that's, that's the only tank mod I could land. I was trying to land some tank mods, um, just to show that even with cloak down, it still kills stuff. But this is going to look clunky just because my rotation's at 11 seconds. If my rotation was at, um, look at this pop. Like if my rotation was at, uh you know, six seconds with four seconds of uptime, this would look amazing. But let's see that pack. Like, we're, we still kill stuff. We, you'll still kill stuff with no cloak up. I didn't cloak there at all. Cloak is like 100 times damage button, and I don't even need it for, for, for maps. Like, I'm not even cloaking. Ready? Here, I'll cloak in three, two, one, cloak. Oh, there's nothing up now. It, like, things are dying before I can even cloak. Like, this feels smooth, because, like, it's just it's just a chaining behind you explosion as you follow behind cycloning. Like, it it's just your good old spin to win and everything dies behind you build. Those will die. I don't care about loot. But, yeah, if, if I was showing you this right now and I said this was a finished build, I would say it looks too clunky. But compared to the mapping setup uh, for the normal BV, this feels, like, way better. And remember, everything I'm killing with Cloak Up, I'm overkilling it by, like, a thousand times. So all this stuff would still die in Deep Delve. But, yeah, I I have so much to improve on this setup. Uh, I'm probably going to make a full video dedicated to it um, in the coming weeks. This, this video maybe doesn't do justice, and like I said, I'm still theorycrafting it, but... 
I suspect in a couple weeks I will have a full, well ironed setup for well ironed out setup for this that will play smooth, play fast, have very high uptime, and just one shot the whole world. That's that's the goal. And on paper, I've already got it figured out. I just don't want to sit here and craft for six hours in standard to get it going. You know, I'd I'd rather do it in league. I'll I'll probably make a video dedicated to this, but I wanted to show this off. And like I said, you can still just play the, the BV setup. Um, BV did get buffed. If you look at, um, it's about a 14% buff because it gets uh, tick frequency. Because now it says, um, oh, Blade Vortex. 5% increased hit rate per blade. So that's 50% increased hit rate, but it diminishing returns with the uh, already there, like 35% increased hit rate, which makes about 14% more damage by having this new quality. So BV got buffed just straight up. Um, but there's, like I said, you can play um, all three brands, BV and um, Cremation. There's a new cremation that doesn't need corpses that Rudy is convinced is going to be the, the best skill for this build for like delve and mapping and bossing and everything. Um, I'll see if, if this is the case, maybe, maybe, maybe this is the play. I'll have to test with it. The gem's not out yet, but there's, there's at least five skills you can play this as. Um, but those, those are the main three. But I, I have three final concepts I'm going to talk about. The fourth build I played last league was Flicker Strike. Flicker Strike does share the Anomalous Mail each nerf. But the nice thing is it didn't get the same ramp numbers as Mana Forged Arrows. So its multiplier, its increased damage from Mana Leech wasn't as high as Mana Forged Arrows. But it was already kind of dependent on uh, Anomalous Mana Le on uh, Battle Mage's Cry. It's still that way. So, before Mana Forged Arrows, if you didn't have Battle Mages Cry Up, could just still kill everything. Whereas, in the Flicker video, if you go back and watch, I pretty much always had Battle Mages Cry Up, because it kind of needed it. Um, so, that it's kind of the same as Mana Forge. It doesn't change too much. You pretty much just have Battle Mages Cry Up on, like, a 10, 11 or 12 second duration, and just keep it up. If you do that, it pretty much plays the same. There's one thing to note, though, and that's we got um, a new... Uh, a new gem today for flicker strike that uh is actually kind of interesting so it's flicker strike of power the reason that the flicker build is a little bit restrictive is because it requires a, a specific corruption mod to to play the flicker build and this flicker gem kind of removes that need you can either use multi-strike and this full sustains but then you can't play it as high row cause, or you can't take the the power charge node for minimum power charges, but that's fine. Uh, you can play as Inquisitor or just not, not take the power charge node. But yeah, th this setup, you, you I mean, this gives you your charges. This is the full sustain. Like you, you could just, you don't need the corrupt weapon. And the other thing that is, if you don't need the corrupt weapon, this also opens you up to potentially use Energy Blade. Um, so... As Hyro or some Templar hybrid with like Forbidden Flame or the charms that function kind of like Forbidden Flames we're getting this league, you could do some nutty ES mana combo where you get like 30, 40, 50k energy shield and play Energy Blade. And then you could do like an Energy Blade flicker setup with this, but I haven't I haven't thrown it together. If I do something like that, it'll I'll maybe make a video on it. But I just thought I'd throw this in there. Um one last build I want to talk about. Two last builds, actually. There's two last ones that I've kind of just made concepts on. Um, the first one is there's a skill that got really buffed that was already good, but it didn't really see a ton of play. And that's Stormburst. Hello? Why did this not show up when I searched Storm? What? That's literally the word Storm. Anyways. Stormburst has a base duration of 1.2 seconds, and it's got scaling where more duration equals more damage. So this going from 1.2 to 1.6 second duration is 33% more damage for Stormburst, and it was already an insane skill. Um, it does lose the Helmet Enchant, 
So this ultimately comes out to be like 15% more damage or something. But the, I, I'm going to show this off because this is just like a proof of concept I'm working on. Um, with all the different wombo combo, like forbidden flame combos we'll get with charms potentially of like mixing and matching different Templar sentences together. There's a setup I want to experiment with that uses... Um, it uses Energy Blade with Storm Burst to get the flat damage scaling, but then it also uses Indigon, and it just runs with, like, a little bit of unreserved mana. Like, like I'll run with, like, 18k mana here, but I'll keep, like, 5k unreserved, maybe. I, I don't, don't pay attention to the numbers now, but... And the concept here is that um, my spend is just a little bit positive for Indigon Ramp, so basically, I just cloak to ramp up a little bit. And then basically, the channel is a flat line. And just the amount of mana re recovery I have naturally sustains Indigon stacks. And the reason I want to play with this is because if you can get the Guardian node that gives 5% um, increased recovery per aura, and you can run like 10 auras and then get like maybe 40 aura effect, whatever, this gives you 70% more mana recovery. On top of things like arcane surge effect and stuff you could end up getting like three or four k natural regen which could be enough to just sustain max indigon stacks for two thousand percent spell damage which could basically take what is an already good build which would be energy blade storm burst and then the only thing that build struggles with is it's putting all of its investment into scaling es so it's not really coming by percent increased damage very often so if you just sprinkle 2,000% increased damage on an already good build, suddenly you can get some stupid numbers. I have to refine this more. Don't pay attention. This is just... Trust me. All my builds start off like this, and then the real thing has bigger numbers, and it's an actual functional build. But this was just kind of a proof concept I'm throwing together. If I make this work, I'll make a, a full video on it. But maybe someone sees this and wants to theorycraft with it a little bit. But, but I'm going to call this Equilibrium Indigon, where you just have a spend... That's the exact same as your stacks, roughly. Where, like, you know, your per four second spend is just slightly higher than your uh, spent recently number, which is how you get a positive feedback loop. And it's just ever so slightly ahead that you basically just hold channel and just stay at max Indigon stacks. You don't go up or down, you just flatline. That's what I want to play with. The last build that's like a concept that I want to just throw out there is yesterday we got a batch of. Um, new transfigured gems and there's one of these that's kind of stupid and this fits mana stacking here so crackling lance of disintegration this has some nutty potential because what this gives is we can't alt over it and prove it but i'm assuming that it's one percent max shock per quality um which means that if you enhance this up with like a level five awaken enhance and like maybe plus two gems and a something and like you know you could get this gem to like a hundred quality and you could even potentially take the masteries for like 15 max shock and stuff i did the math on this you can get a shock of over 160 percent the problem is um most things in this game the way shock works is it it scales exponentially at a 0.4 power so um normally to shock something for 50 percent you need to hit it for 50 percent of its health so to get a 160 percent shock that means since it's the 0.4 power scaling you need to take this to the 2.5 power which is the inverse exponent that means you need to hit it 18.3 times harder which means to hit to shock a monster for 160 percent you need to hit it for 915% of its health, which is pretty unrealistic. However, high or near the high voltage was where I usually take this, but there's a, there's a lightning mastery that says increases and reductions to maximum mana also apply to shock effect at 30% of their value. Well, a pretty juiced up mana build can get 600% increased mana if you take all the mana. So that makes this... Over, I've had to like 187 when I take this node before, so I was over 600. So 187% increased shock effect means that 160 only needs to be divided by 2.87. So now it only needs to be 55%, which means now to shock something for 160%, uh, 
you only need to hit it for 65% of its health. Which, then if you mix in the overcharge gem, which makes you shock as if dealing 8 times damage, you only need to hit it for 8% of its health. So with this setup on a mana stacker using this lightning mastery on like a juiced quality, um, like six link crackling lance, you could for hitting something for 8% of its health get a 160% shock. The problem is that crackling lance with like both the uh, overshock gem that's making it do less damage and the fact you're using like enhance and all this janky stuff to increase the quality, maybe ashes, probably don't go voltaxic, that's probably overkill is the Crackling Lance isn't actually going to do that much damage. But there's a skill called Galvanic Field that does absolutely stupid damage and Lightning Conduit uh, if you have a 160% shock. So if I look up Galvanic Field... Um, let's look this up. So Galvanic Field has a mob that says... Field gains 15% more damage with hits per 5% shock. So 160 divided by 5 times 15. So Galvanic Field is doing 5.8 times damage. And then it also gains um, 1.6 meter radius, which is huge. 1.6 meter radius is like the base radius of level 15 Righteous Fire. That's added on to this, like before area scaling. So this is, this is how you get like a full screen galvanic field that's doing like a hundred million dps this is not good for content where you're moving a lot like mapping but for something like simulacrum or delve or blight or any content where you stand in one spot and say i'm gonna kill everything right here drop using galvanic field and then just throwing a crack lance at a blue monster for a 160 percent shock will give you this giant field of death that lasts for like 10 seconds because the base duration is 6, so you can get that up to like 15 seconds if you really wanted to. But you probably don't even need to just because it's so easy to reshock something. You just have this field of death for like 10 seconds that will just do 100 million DPS to everything, and then you just re-crack lance something to proc it again. So for, for content like maybe Delve, Simulacrum, Blight, any stationary content... This could be a pretty crazy build. Or maybe bossing with this and Lightning Conduit. But I think I'm going to Theorycraft on this more. But this really fits the uh, this really fits the mana archetype. Because like I showed earlier, there's no real way to get 160% shocks. Except with the Lightning Mastery as a full-blown mana stacker. That is how you abuse this. Uh, but like I said, I might Theorycraft on that more. We'll see. Alright, that's been a long video. I know I really guess wrong on these. I'm going to guess this has been like 50 minutes. Normally I guess 20 and I'm at like 2 hours. So uh, we'll, we'll, see if, we'll see if my guessing game's improving. But this is the updated spectrum of mana builds for um, 323 for Affliction League. I will obviously theorycraft on some of these more. And maybe some of these ideas I've spit out, I'll give a whole dedicated video to if I refine them and make them into like a finished product. Um, or if there's any major breakthrough, like maybe I make a major breakthrough with like Mana Forge or Arc Mage cast from channeling. If I make any major breakthrough, I'll give it its own dedicated video. But this is this is the overview of what's changing. TLDR is the mana archetype is still just numerically head and shoulders above the rest. Um, mana Forge Arrows is a little clunkier, but it's still basically the best build in the game. Arc Mage cast when channeling has just like untapped potential to maybe surpass it. And Mjolnir, it was already one of the strongest builds in the game that you can play from day one. And it's going to be like 45% stronger this league if you can solve the leech, which should be able to, or just use a foreboding flask. Thanks. I'll see you guys on 323 launch, or tomorrow for a video. We'll see.